Hello, welcome back once again to Teacher Jesse and today I will be discussing with you about how to solve word problems involving proportion, specifically itong direct, inverse, and partitive proportion. Okay, simulan na natin. So, let's start with the drill. I will give you a few seconds before I will reveal the answer. Simplify each ratio. Let's start with 5 is to 50. Okay, the correct answer is 1 is to 10. You just divide them by 5, 5 divided by 5, and 50 di divided by 5 is 10. Number 2, 8 is to 16. Okay, the correct answer is divided by 8, divided by 8, 1 half. Number 3, 8 is to 10. Okay, so 4 is to 5 divided by 2, divided by 2, so 4 is to 5. Number 4, 10 is to 50. Okay, 1 is to 5 divided by 10. And then the last number, 9 is to 12. Okay, so 3 is to 4 divided by 3 both uh, quantities. Did you get 5? Very good. Okay, let's continue with our review. Find the missing term of each proportion. Okay. 2 is to 3 is equal to blank is to 6. Go. Okay, the correct answer is 4. So, if we check, 2 times 6 is 12 and 3 times 4 is 12. So, that's the product. Ang product ng extremes saka ng means, means itong nasa gitna, dapat magkapareho para proportional sila. Or kung naka-fraction form, pag cross multiply dapat the same product. Okay, number 2. 5 is to 10 is equal to 6 is to blank. Okay, so the correct answer is 12. Kasi nga, 10 times 6 is 60. Tapos 60 divided by 5 is 12. Number 3. 4, 4 fifths is equal to blank over 10. Okay, so the correct answer is 8. Kasi, uh, 4 times 10 is 40 divided by 5 is equal to 8. And number 4. 10 is to blank is equal to 1 third. Okay, so the correct answer is 10 times 3 is 30 divided by 1 is 30. Did you get 4? Okay, very good. This time, we'll have the gearing up activity. Okay, ito yung problem opener natin. We have Miss Fernandez bought 12 kilos of rice for 504 pesos. At the same price, how much will she pay for 25 kilos of rice. So, ito yung, uh, we have the problem solving steps. Analyze natin ang problem. We have to understand the problem. So, merong biniling 12 kilos, tapos 504 yung binayaran. Pag ganda ang presyo, magkano babayaran pag 25 kilos ang binili? Kasi nga, 12 kilos lang to. So, with this kind of problem, we are dealing with ratio and proportion already. So, at ano-ano nga ba yung Ration proportion. So, meron tayong tatlong klase ng ration proportion. Or, tatlong klase ng proportion. We have the direct, inverse, or yung inverse or indirect. Tsaka yung pangatlo, yung partially proportion. Kapag sinabi natin direct proportion, yung pag umakyat yung isang or tumaas yung isang quantity, or an increase in one quantity, magre-resulta yun sa increase rin sa isa pang quantity. For, like, for example, pag bumili ka ng isang ballpen na tag 5 pesos, pag dinamihan mo yung ballpen, expect ka rin na mas malaki rin ang babayaran mo. So, ganun ang, ang dir, uh, uh, direct proportion. Yung inverse naman or indirect proportion ay opposite or kabaligda na nun. Pag nag-increase ang isang quantity, eh, bababa yung kabilang quantity. Like, for example, pag halimbawa yung isang building at uh, yung isang isang classroom tinatapos siya ng ng 10 workers in just like for example 1 week so 7 days okay tapos pag dumami yung workers or kumonte ang workers maapektuhan yung tagal ng pagkatapos ng isang classroom like for example kung 20 uh, kung 10 10 workers tapos natatapos in 1 week pag 20 workers Siyempre, ilang days lang yun. Hindi naabot ng one week yun. Or, kung five workers lang ang magtatrabaho, siyempre, tatagal yun ng more than one week. Yun, baligtad. Hindi increase-increase, kundi increase-decrease or decrease-increase. Yun ang inverse. 
Tsaka yung party rib proportion naman, eh, yung mga madali lang naman ma-identify yun. May mga parts like for example, 1 is to 2 is to 3, tapos may total na binigay. Okay, so later on, tatalakayin pa natin yung mga ganyan. Okay, we have this first problem first. So kung analyze natin, we have the step number 1. Identify muna natin, okay, identify whether the problem is involving direct inverse or party rib proportion. So, sa problem na to, syempre pag 12 kilos, 504 ang binayaran mo. Pag 25 kilos, expect natin na tataas yung or lalaki rin yung babayaran natin. Ibig sabihin, this is, uh, so kung ilalagay natin sa table, yan 12 kilos tapos 504. Siyempre, pag 25 kilos, expect natin tao mas more than 504. So, nag-increase ang 12 to 25, nag-increase 504, tataas rin yan. So, increase. Increase and increase, it is a direct proportion. Okay. Pag direct proportion, eto yung steps or ang pag-set up. Okay, ganito lang. Napakasimple lang. Just set up like this. 12 is to 504. Yan. 12 is to 504 equals 25 is to N. So, kailangan, kung dito ka nagsimula, 12, 504, dito ka rin magsimula sa second part sa kabilang side ng proportion. 25 is to N. Represent lang natin to ng N. Okay? Hindi pwedeng 12 is to 504 tapos Tapos, dito naman, ganito, n is to 25, baligtad. Okay. Kailangan kung dito, dito rin sa first, uh, ito kasi yung first term, and then second term, third term, and the fourth term. Okay. Pwede rin, 12 is to 25 is to 504 is, ay, uh, is equal to 504 is to n. So, yeah. But, ang uh, uh, recommended ko is ganito, 12 is to 504 kasi nga, they are, we are comparing uh, quantities, yung rate. Okay. So, pag gumamitin kayo ng fractions, ganun pa rin. 12 over 504 is equal to 25 over n. Tapos, apply na natin yung paano mag-solve ng n, yung kagaya sa review natin kanina. Okay, continue lang tayo. We have this first term. Okay, 504 is the second term. Ayan. We have also the third term. So, ito yung third term natin, 25. And the fourth term is missing, represented by n. Ito yung nasa gitna, as what I've said a while ago, ito yung means, yung mga inner terms. At itong nasa labas naman, itong si 12 tsaka si n, yan sila ang mga extremes. Okay? So, solution na tayo. We have solve for the missing term of the proportion. So, ganun na. Yung 12 times n, pares natin itong ganito, extremes tsaka means, is equal to 504 times 25. So, 12 times n is 12n. And then, 504 times 25 is equal to 12,600. Okay? And then, since meron tayong numerical coefficient na 12, so, divide natin to both sides of the equation by 12 para n na lang yung matera. Okay? So, n is equal to 12,600 divided by 12 is 1,050. Okay? Therefore, pag 25 kilos yung binili, one, uh, we are expecting to pay 5 or... Ah, ito yung babayaran ni Mrs. Fernandez. 1,050 pesos. Okay? So, this is an example of a direct proportion. So, increase, 12 naging 25, tapos 504 naging 1,050. Okay. Moving on, we have another problem. It takes 8 days for 35 men to harvest corn on mang earnings farm. At the same rate, how long will it take for 20 men to harvest corn on his farm? So, yan. Pag 35 men daw, 8 days. Pag 20 men, sabi sabihin, nabawasan yung manggagawa, ilang days kaya? Okay. So, step number 1, yun pa rin, identify natin. So, pag ilagay natin sa table, we have number days and we have number of workers. Pag 8 days, 8 days daw, pag 35 ang workers. Tapos, pag Nabawasan yung workers, naging 20 workers na lang, ilang days. So, pag i-analyze natin, siyempre kung, kung maraming workers, 8 days na tapos, pag konti na lang yung workers, ganong rate, ibig sabihin, expect natin na tataas dito. So, siguro 10, 11, 12, yan, or hindi natin alam. So, 8, naging lagpas sa 8, so increase. Tapos dito, 35, naging 20, decrease, opposite sila. So, ibig sabihin, increase in one quantity while decrease in the second quantity, yun ay isang inverse proportion. Okay? So, ganun yung palatandaan ng inverse 
direct and inverse. Okay. And pag inverse proportion, take note, ito yung step number 2. If it is an inverse proportion, simply multiply the first and the second term, then divide the result by the product of the third and the fourth term, or vice versa, depending on which pair has complete value. So, anong ibig sabihin nun? Hahanap ka lang daw dito ng... Kasi ito yung first natin, di ba? First term, ito yung second, third, ito yung fourth. Hahanap ka ng kompletong pair. So, yan, nakakolom lang sila. Uh, a row pala, ito, a row. So, ito yung kompleto, 8 ka 35. Ang gawin mo lang daw, i-multiply mo lang daw yan, tapos i-divide mo doon sa hindi kompleto, yung isang pair na yan. Okay? So, pag nang ganito, 8 times 35, sila yung kompleto, is equal to 280. Tapos, ito yung may missing na partner. So, divide mo ng 20 is equal to 14. Ibig sabihin, 280 divided by 20 is equal to 14. So, 14 days daw ma-harvest yung, yung corn dun sa farm ni Mang Earning. Okay? So, nakita na natin. Ayan, 14. So, nag-increase. So, kung 8, Ah, kung 35 magtatrabaho, 8 days lang. Pero pag 20 lang, konti lang yung nagtrabaho, tatagal ng 14 days. See the difference between direct and inverse proportion. Okay, we have another example. Moving on. The ratio of three sides of a triangle ABC is 2 is to 4 is to 6. If the perimeter of the triangle is 120 centimeters, what is the length of each side? So, ito yung sinasabi ko kanina na na partitive proportion. Merong 2 is to 4 is to 6, tapos may given dito, or 1 is to 2, tapos yung isang quantity given, yan lang yung mga partitive proportion. Kaya hindi pair na dalawang ratios kung pa, na na-compare. So, ang gagawin natin, prag proportion, iba yung process natin. Gagamitan natin siya ng uh, model approach, black model or Singaporean approach para mas madaling maintindihan. Kaya although meron ding algebra, algebra na process dito, Yung mga n, 1n, uh, 2n, plus 4n, plus 6n, ganyan. Kaya lang, medyo mahirap yun para sa iba. So, mas prefer ko na ituturo yung gagamitan natin ng black model. Later on, madidiscover nyo rin naman na madali lang pala kahit na ganun na ang gagamitin nyo. Basta nakuha, as long as nakuha nyo lang yung concept. Okay, we have side A. Ayan. So, meron tayong 2 kasi 2 nga yung rational or ang ratio. So, we have also side B, 4. Ayan. And then 6 for side C. Ayan yung mga sides. 6. Ayan. Next, the perimeter of the triangle is 120 centimeters. Pag perimeter kasi, add mo yan yung tatlo. So, side A plus B plus C is equal to 120. Pag sabihin, itong mga boxes na to, uh, itong sides na to, represented by the boxes, i-add mo yan total. Pag total mo daw yan is 120 centimeters. Okay? So, meron na kaagad tayong clue. Kasi nga, ang kailangan lang sa black model is makuha lang natin itong isang part na to. Then, we can identify already or we can already give the answer. Okay? So, since meron itong 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 boxes. So, 120 divided by 12 lang kaagad natin which is equal to 10. And we know already that this one part is 10, this is 10. So, lahat yan, 10 na yan. Ayan, 10. So, ayan. So, ang, balik tayo sa question, what is, the pyramid, uh, what is the length of each side? So, itong side A, 10 plus 10 is simply 20. Side B is 4 na 10, so 40. And this one is 60. So, this is our answer. Madali lang, di ba, ang part the proportion using the block model. Okay. So, this time, practice pa tayo ng another exercises. Uh, subukan nyo, post nyo yung video, tapos, answeran nyo muna bago i-continue yung pag-play ng video para makita nyo at makompare nyo kung tama ba yung answer na nakuha ninyo. We have problem number one. A farmer can plant 150 eggplant seedlings in one day. How many egg plant seedlings can he plant in 4 days. Okay, start. Okay, so pause nyo lang video pag kailangan nyo ng time. Ah, Siyempre, kailangan nyo ng medyo mahabang time. Pero, uh, i-reveal ko na yung answer. We have this box or illustration. So, 
expect natin na pag mas maraming number of days, so ibig sabihin mas maraming matatanim na egg, na eggplant, uh, eggplant seedling. So ibig sabihin direct kasi increase increase. So pag direct, so ganun lang. Pair natin to 150 times 4 means times means and uh, means and extremes. We have 1 times n is equal to n so 150 times 4 is 600 is equal to n so ibig sabihin ang answer is 600 eggplant seedlings ang matatanim in 4 days did you get the correct answer okay proceed tayo sa second example a florist can make 100 lace in 6 hours so yung lace yung nilalagay nga dito sa sinasabit pag pag may sa mga bisita okay Tapos, if her daughter will help her in the same manner as the florist can do the job, in how many hours can the lace be made? Okay, so pag florist daw, ang isang florist daw ay kayang gumawa ng 100 lace in 6 hours. Pag tumulong yung anak niya, ilang oras nila matatapos tong 100 lace? Okay, start. So, reveal ko na ang answer. We have first Ito yung illustration. So, number of florists, siya lang mag-isa. Number of hours, 6. Pag dalawa sila, we are expecting na syempre, hindi na to aabutan ng 6 hours, mas mabilis. Ibig sabihin, kung increase dito, 1 naging 2, tapos 6, bababa yan. So, increase, tapos decrease. This is, of course, an inverse proportion. So, pag inverse proportion, ganun lang, 1 times 6, di ba? Yung kompletong term, 1 times 6 is equal to 6, tapos divided by 2. So, 6 divided by 2 is 3. Ibig sabihin, 3 days lang. Uh, 3 hours rather. Sorry. 3 hours lang, tapos na. Okay, logical naman. Kasi pag siya lang mag-isa, 6 hours, dalawa sila. Tapos, kasing bilis sila. Siyempre, siyempre madob, uh, naging doble yung manpower. So, magiging kalahati na lang yung time. So, naging 3 from 6, naging 3. Okay, ingat lang tayo sa inverse and direct proportion. Okay, we have... I guess it's the last exercise. The ratio of COVID patients to the PUIs. PUIs yung mga person under investigation. In the hospital is 2 is to 3. If there are 60 COVID patients, how many PUIs are there? Okay, go. Okay, I will reveal the answer. So, partitive, obviously, partitive proportion yan kasi 2 is to 3. And then, 60 yung COVID patients. So, gagamit tayo ng block model. We have COVID patients. We have 2. And then, PUI 3. Ayan. Ayan. So, next is, ang given dito this time, hindi yung the whole. Ang COVID daw, 60. So, itong dalawang boxes na to, 60. Sorry, 60. So, ibig sabihin, kung 60 yan, may clue na kagad tayo. Divided by 2 lang natin kasi dalawang boxes yan. 60 divided by 2, this is 30 and this is 30. And we can identify already na ito 30, 30 and this is 30. So, how many PUIs are there? Siyempre, add lang natin yan. 30 plus 30 plus 30 is equal to, or 30 times 3 is equal to 90. So, the correct answer is, ay, the correct answer is 90. Okay? So, I hope that you have learned something new today or nadagdagan pa yung kaalaman natin sa uh, sa proportion. So, mag-ingat lang tayo sa pag-identify ng direct, inverse, and partitive proportion kasi nga pag nabaligdad, iba yung answer talaga natin. And then, once again, bibigay ko sa inyo tong paalalang ito, isang quote. In math, it is not about how much you know, rather it is what you do when you do not know. So, hindi paramihan ng alam sa math, kundi ito yung mas mainam pa rin kung anong discard ang gagawin mo pag hindi mo na alam. Okay. So, thank you very much for watching and please like and share this video para makatulong rin sa ibang mga nag-aaral ngayong pandemic.